Hello people of YouTube, this is Yorkin, the Yoshkin pondering a thought. No, not a thought, but a thought. On which is the best racing game out there. Well, cart-wise that is. We have three games in the lineup, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Team Sonic Racing, and Crash Team Racing. All these games have their strengths and weaknesses. And I have six different things I'll be judging these games on. First off, these categories are visuals, tracks, characters, items, mechanics, and balance. Well, I'll be starting off with Mario Kart 8, then Team Sonic Racing, and last will be Crash Team Racing for when I'm explaining all of these categories. Well, end the video by comparing all these to a head-to-head, -head. and by the way, I'm going to abbreviate all these names to just Mario Kart, Team Racing, and CTR, just so you know. You know, despite the original game coming out in 2014, this port of the game still looks really good. This cartoon art style has held up for over half a decade, and while all these games has a cartoon art style, this one doesn't seem dated at all. With all the lights, track designs, and hazards on said tracks, this game is simply eye candy. With a total of 78 parts to play with for your customizable experience, you can put your favorite racer in any car combination you wish. Out of all the games we'll be discussing, Mario Kart has, a, has the most tracks with a total of 48. Now hold your horses there. Because it has the most tracks doesn't mean any of the tracks are any good. Actually, to be completely honest, I don't dislike any of these tracks. They're all good to play on. From diving into a coral reef to going into a haunted mansion, all of these tracks stand out. Okay, maybe not Water Park, but all the others stand out very nicely. Water Park's a bit bland. It's probably the most forgettable one out of the bunch. We have a total of 25 new tracks and 23 retro tracks. If I were to pick a track that I dislike, it'd probably be that new Rainbow Road. Honestly, it's a little too easy, and I'm not really digging the space station theme of the track. But, on the other hand, I have to say my absolute favorite has to be Electrodome. Being at a nightclub where someone's hitting the beats is a very fun way to race around the track. Again, none of these tracks I truly dislike. There are only a few nitpicks. In Mario Kart 8, there are a total of 42 characters. Hey, I know you've seen that asterisk, unless you're only listening. If you don't include any clones or babies, there are only 33 characters. And if you do include the babies, and only don't include the skins, there are 38. And this video will only not be including the skins, mainly due to Crash Team Racing only ha having baby characters also. So, the metal and fur suited Mario and Peach are gone. That still leaves the other characters such as Mario and Friends, Bowser and Family, Link, Inklings, Isabelle, Villager, and a few minions to join in on the races. Each character has their own stature corresponding to their weight, but that really only matters truly during time trials. Still, it's nice to know what character suits you, so I'd recommend looking at those stats. Mario Kart holding the most trophy again, this time with items being at 23, 22 only available during races, chaos ensues with the vast normal number of items this game has to offer. From boosts, to tracking shells, to just a plain old banana, all these items will stick out in your head. With most items, you can use them by throwing them forward or leaving them behind, but some items are used upon yourself like coin, boo, star, bullet bill, and others. All items in this game has a use. This includes the coin item. If the coin is held in your first position in your held items, it can stop Boo from stealing one of your better items. Learning to use all of the items in this game will benefit you tremendously against your opponents. Or they could just cost the game. Eh, Mario Kart's kind of that way. It's a tricky mistress with his items. One of the things that they did in this game that they didn't do in other games is that the really powerful items like lightning were only to be given to one player at that moment. With that knowledge, you could you could have held lightning until you've used it, but now that multiple players can hold that item, it basically forces players to use it 
once they receive it or fear losing it if somebody else gets it right before them. And a little rare thing that can happen is two players can use lightning at the exact same time and it could demolish your coins, but that's that's quite rare. I don't expect that happening anytime soon. To make this short, Mario Kart's item system feels like it's completely random. You could just need one item to win the game, but the game doesn't give it to you and you lose as a result of it. But hey, Mario Kart wouldn't be Mario Kart without its items. Alright, mechanics. Mario Kart has the simplest mechanics that I can think of. For the most part, you're going to be doing drifting around your tracks. That's all you're really going to be doing. So, we have drifting, which is inside drifting and outside drifting. Inside drifting is exclusive to certain bikes, while outside drifting can be on any and all carts or bikes or ATVs. Inside drifting allows you to cut corners a lot sharper, while outside drifting allows you to actually have a better angle to see your track while turning. Personally, I prefer inside drifting, but there's pros and cons to both. Now, let's talk about the central gimmick of this game. Anti-gravity. Anti-gravity allows you to no longer be bound by the laws of gravity. And instead, you can now go anywhere your tires see fit. While that does sound cool, there's also another thing that happens with anti-gravity. It's called the spin boost. The spin boost is initiated by bumping into other racers while in anti-gravity. Both of you guys will receive a boost unless the person has a star or a bullet bill. Now, nice fun fact that you probably didn't know, if you actually have a star and you bump into a bullet bill, you'll actually get a spin boost off of it. Normally you don't, but with the bullet bill count somehow. And it's nice to know, they kind of whiz by too fast for it to actually be practical. Now, speaking about boost, why don't we talk about trick boosts? Trick boosts are performed by pressing the drift button or the hop button, they're both the same button, it really don't matter, when you're going off of a ramp or a hill. You'll know you got a trick boost if your character's doing, well, a nice flashy animation that makes them look cool. Donkey Kong especially has some of the best animations for this. I actually like how he's grinning and how he's posing. It's quite nice. The next technique that you can use is slipstreaming. When behind another racer, you'll start to gain a bit of speed, and if you hold it long enough, you can whiz past them. Be careful because the other racer can see you gaining speed if they turn the camera behind, or if they have an item, you might not want to hit said item because you'll just lose all your speed that way. Now, let's go into the main thing you're gonna be doing is drifting. There are three different types of drift, drift boosting. There's blue, there's orange, and there's purple each one faster than the longest, and purple's preferably the one you wanna go after if you can. While coins were in the item section, I can talk about how they work in the mechanics section. Coins work in this simple way. You, the more coins you collect, the faster you go. You can collect up to 10. Once you get hit, or if you fall off a course, you'll lose a total of three coins, unless you don't have three coins. All right, the last, but definitely not the slowest clip, that we got in this game is 200cc. While this is a mode, not really a mechanic, it does change how you play the game, so I decided to put it in this section. In 200cc, you go fast, really fast. Sometimes it's too fast for you to actually hit some drifts right. Because of that, they allowed you now to press the brake button while drifting, so you don't have to go to a complete stop to do some of these turns. I personally like 200cc, it brings a bit of a challenge and you go really, really fast. The only downside I say to 200cc is one, once you play 200cc and then go down to a lower speed setting, it is very noticeable. And two, it allows you to actually do some shortcuts that you can't normally do when on a slower speed setting. Heh, <laughs> do you believe me when I said that these games mechanics was the simplest now? If not, we're only getting started. We still got Sonic Team Racing and we still got Crash Team Racing to cover. Ah, balancing in Mario Kart. 
Uh, that's probably an oxymoron somewhere. If we were only talking about Mario Kart, this is probably one of the most balanced Mario Kart games around. Especially the original edition, which only allowed you to have one item. But we're talking about the deluxe edition. The reason why this game is so unbalanced is because of the item spam. You will get hit, and you will get hit a lot, especially if you're in places 2 through 11, because you will get hit with so many items, you'll wish that you just, it'll just stop. You'll just wish you were either in first or you were in last, because those are the only two places you're not getting hit. Even first place still can get hit by certain things, like the blue shell, if they're not prepared. But if this game wasn't without items, I don't think I'd be playing it. Items are an interesting concept for Mario Kart when it comes to how you play it. You gotta love them. Even if they screw you over in the long run, you gotta love the items. The main problem with this game along for two items is it allows first place to stay in first place a lot easier than it would be if they only are allowed to hold one item. First place has a chance of having two shells or two bananas or two items that can just block items. While second place and all the others, second place has to worry about trying to get the first place and defending second place. It's nigh impossible if you want to get in first place and third place is still attacking you. It's one of the reasons why I really like the one item system from the original Mario Kart 8. The only hope you have is for a blue shell to come, and for the most part they feel rather rare in this game compared to games like Mario Kart Wii or Mario Kart Double Dash where they come every 5 seconds, and it was preferable that you stayed in second place, but now they're a rare occurrence and first place is rewarded for being a good player, which is kinda rare for being for a Mario Kart game. Now, while I've been saying this game is random, it's not completely random. Let me explain a little bit. So, how do you get items? You get items primarily based off of your position and how far you are from first place. I mean distance-wise, not as in position-wise. You could be in first place, somebody could be in second place, and a second place could be halfway around the track around from you, and you can get a bullet bill. I've seen this happen with my friends, and they it just happened. You could be first place, and the person could be eighth place, and all they could get are a couple green shells or a couple red shells because they're everyone's close enough. They tried to really balance it, and I honestly prefer chaos more in Mario Kart than anything else. Chaos is just fun for Mario Kart. It's just that one key selling point for Mario Kart is it's chaos. And for whatever reason, this title doesn't have very much of it. It still has plenty enough. So much that it is the most unbalanced game that we'll be talking about. But I think I got all I want to say for Mario Kart. Here goes some Team Sonic Racing. Now hold your horses just a bit. Upon further inspection and analysis into Team Sonic Racing, it kind of made me want to go back and play Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed. And from certain things that I found out about looking up team racing. So, instead of just comparing teamed, we're gonna be adding another game into the mix. Transformed is the game we're bringing in. You'll thank me later. Besides, most of the things in these games are quite similar. If there is something different between the games, I'll explain it with teams first, and then it's gonna be transformed. All right. All right, onward with your regularly scheduled analysis. All right, on to the regularly scheduled video. Now, the visuals for Team Sonic Racing looks amazing. With all the colors and lights in this game, it's just a joy to look at. If there's one thing I love doing in this game is looking at the background. Characters and all the vehicles look well. The customizability in this game is a bit lacking compared to the other two titles, with it only being 21 different items to customize your cart per character. While that sounds nice, around half of those parts are in gold, and trust me, gold does not do these parts any justice. While these parts actually do affect how the vehicle performs, and you get to customize them a lot, it's really preference all to say so. I personally 
would rather not go for the vehicle's stats changing because I'd like to go for style more than anything else. But to each their own. Now for Transformed. You didn't think Mario Kart 8 was the only old game, did you? Well, you kind of had to because I didn't include Transformed into this segment, did I? But then originally releasing in 2012, Transform happens to be a bit older than Mario Kart. Like the other games too, this game has a cartoon art style. While it still holds up to this day, you can still notice as an older game. Unlike Team Racing, this game has more than just Sonic characters, but characters and tracks from all of Sega's wheelhouse. This means a bit more than just Sonic areas to look at. Unfortunately, this game has no visual customization available unless you're on PC, so you're stuck with the cart that you pick. For me, I don't mind that I'm stuck with a character's personalized vehicle, but others, might it might be a bit nerve-wracking to say the least. On the plus side, your vehicle transforms during the race at certain points on the track, so there's that. All of the tracks stand out in this game for more than just how they look, but how they play as well. Honestly, I was impressed in 2012 with how I loved all the tracks just on looks alone. It's also a plus that I'm unfamiliar with some of Sega's IPs. Hey, blame Sega for this one. They don't make any new games unless it's Sonic. So some of these characters and tracks I had to look up where they were originally from, a lot like Super Smash Bros. I digress. While this game doesn't look as good as it could if it were made like Team Racing, it isn't awful, just a bit dated. Now, both Team Racing and Transformed are tied with the least number of courses. That being 21. Unfortunately, Team Racing has more returning tracks than Transformed, with a total of 9. Yes, that's almost half of the tracks this game has to offer, and I'm not a fan of this. Along with 3 of the 9 returning tracks being locked behind the story mode. Unlike CTR, which we knew that game from the start was full of remade tracks, this game doesn't tell you that. But look on the bright side, all the tracks look really good. Yeah, that's nice. If only they were fun to play on. Most of the tracks suffer from two things, very long straightaways or overly spacious track design. I have a feeling this is mostly due to the gimmick that this game wants you to use at the cost of good track design. This game also takes a page out of CTR's book and makes certain zones with three tracks each. For the most part, this works with all the newer tracks, due to them not looking like each other, but with the returning tracks, it makes them feel like they could all be the same track, at least visually. I personally like all of the returning tracks very much. Those tracks at least let you feel like the game isn't on easy mode. They're the best tracks in the game. Like I said earlier, this game has 21 courses, but unlike Team Racing, Four of the tracks are returning. Unfortunately, one of the tracks is paid DLC. While, I, while it's not that much of a deal breaker for me, it can be for some. The majority of the tracks in this game transform during certain laps. So while the track count is low, it makes you feel like there's more than meets the eye. Almost all of the tracks stand out because of this fact, and I joy or joyful frustration, depending on who you talk to, to play on. I'm looking at you, Graffiti City. The obstacles on that track almost always get me. But then you have tracks that don't transform but are just fun to play on, like Carrier Zone. This game has some pretty difficult tracks like Race of Ages. On that track, your minimap is completely disabled. And with the amount of turns on that tr this track, along with the different layouts on each lap, it can be hard to stay on this track. Once you get good at the, all the mechanics this game has to offer, it can be an absolute blast to play on. This game only has 15 characters. This game only has 15 characters. I said it twice just in case you didn't hear me the first time. With that said, Team Racing has the least number of characters of all of the games we'll be talking about. Hey, on the bright side, you don't have to unlock any of them. It's the standard Sonic characters too, with, with the new characters to the racing scene being Zarvok, the Chow, Blaze, Silver, Big, Omega, Vector, and Rouge. I'm more surprised they didn't just do Sonic Heroes teams. Most of them come back, come pretty close though. Now, depending on what platform 
you play on will dictate how many characters you have. On PS3 and Vita, the character amount is 24. On Xbox, Wii U, 3DS is 25. On PC is 31. Now here's some bad news. Metal Sonic for all platforms is paid DLC. If you're on PC, there are two other characters that are locked behind DLC as well. Have you taken notice of why I included Transform now? On PC, you have more than double the amount of characters. The tracks are better and more. Since the game has more than just Sonic characters, it allows for more variety and choices you can make. This also extends to the tracks as well, like I said. But unlike in Teams, you do have to unlock a lot of the characters in the game via the World Tour, which if you only want to race with friends, this can be a pain in the butt. Speaking of friends, if you play online or with other players, no one is allowed to pick the same character, which simply blows. For this, I recommend having a few backup characters ready for you to pick, since the game allows for you to level up characters to change the way that you play them. So you might want to get used to a couple characters, at least how they feel. Now I know I've been ripping on this game since, well, the beginning, but the items can at least redeem them, right? I do like the items in this game, but, and of course there's a but, with how the tracks are, it feels like I can't hit anything. With the total of 25 items in this game, this game does what I like from Mario Kart Devil Dash, but a bit differently. Each character has their own category, speed, technique, and power types. With each type comes their own exclusive wisp items. For speed, it's the red is the red wisps. For technique, it's magenta. And for power, it's pink and violet. This makes your choice of what character type you pick before starting matter. If you like a certain wisp, then you have to pick a certain type of character. There is an exception to this rule. While playing in teams mode, you can give your teammates your items. This also has a chance of tripling the item you were holding. I'm not going to discredit them for this. This item system might be perfect if the tracks weren't so wide. The red wisp is perfect for someone who's on your tail. The pink wisp is nice for some up and close melee damage. And the violet wisp is excellent for denying other players items and rings. There are four items that could be inspired by Mario Kart, but this is kind of a given since Mario Kart is like the grandfather of kart racing games. This being Ivory, Jade, Crimson, and Rocket. The last two being the shells from Mario Kart. The way that they use their blue shell like item is simply brilliant. Instead of just hitting the lead player, they make the road covered in obstacles. While it is very similar to another item that's in Transformed, is great for other players. It wastes the lead car's time and almost always allows the other players to catch up. If you think I only like team's items, then I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I really like these two. Being tied for the least number of items at only 11, Transform makes up for it by allowing all of these items to at least be average. Honestly, being average isn't a bad thing. With all of the items being able to do their job well enough, there are some items that do stand out above the rest like the hot rod, for example. This item is a risk versus reward item. Once used, this item gives you a burst of speed until you press the item button again. If you do not press the item button again, your engine will overheat and you'll spin out. If you press the item button again and are near some racers, you'll spin them out with the burst of heat off your engines. This includes items that are targeting you. The swarm item, which was hinted while I was talking about the item section in Team Racing, performs exactly like the clay whips. In this game, you'll find super items in select item box. They will always be the same if you hit them. So if it was a powered up glove, it'd be a super glove. If it was fireworks, it'd be triple fireworks. If it was ice, it'd be double ice. The one thing that's only possible in this game is if an item is targeting you all you and you have a boost item, all you have to do is press the boost item when the item is close to you and it'll go after another player. It makes all the items useful. Similar to Mario Kart, but even better. The last two sections are going to be combined, mainly due to the games being pretty similar. I'll be pointing out the differences between the two when we get to them. First off, this game system is very similar to how Mario Kart's system is. 
They have nearly identical drifting systems, be it there's no inside drifting, but this time they have an improvement. The improvement allows you to change directions on which way you're drifting without losing or using your boost. Honestly, this is my favorite drifting style out of all the games we're comparing. It feels so natural to allow you to go around certain tracks and it allows for excellent track design, if used correctly. Another improvement over Mario Kart system is the trick boost. On the air, you can perform four different types of boosts depending on which way you use your right stick in the air. If you perform at least three tricks, then you can get a level three boost. Maximum level of boost you can do, by the way, is three. You can also fail a trick and get nothing in return but a loss of speed for your figure to pace planning. As long as you have enough time in the air, you should try to do at least one trick to get a boost whenever you land. Here's some mechanics that are exclusive to team racing. Skim boost, and slingshot. These are moves that are exclusive to team mode. Whenever your ally is in front of you, they leave behind yellow tire tracks. If you're in those yellow lines, you'll receive a boost to your speed. If you leave the line, you'll gain a significant boost to your speed as long as you're charged up enough. This is what really makes this game special, but at the cost of track design. At least they didn't do the designs well enough. This mechanic is fun, but with lackluster tracks, it's not as fun as it was supposed to be. We already talked about the items transfer mechanic, so we'll move on to the team ultimate. On the back of your car, there's a yellow bar that fills up every time you perform one of the unique mechanics of this game. When filled by hitting the corresponding button, you and your teammates will become invincible for a short time. And if your teammates hit the button at the same time, the duration will be longer. Honestly, if they added this to the opposing players in general, I could see this being a pretty fun and solid catch-up mechanic. Allowing first place to dictate where the stragglers can improve. Yeah, there is one more mechanic that's exclusive to the team mode. It's to allow your recovery of your teammates. If your teammate gets hit and you whiz past them, you'll give them back most, if not all, of their speed. The faster you're going, when they're going, when they hit their slow, the faster they'll get back to max speed. Another thing that this game takes from Mario Kart is their coin system. This time it's rank. There's no limit to rings, and the difference is between them is once you get hit, you lose all of your rank. You don't lose a set amount. And since this can be beneficial on your top speed, it just sucks. Like I think they should have just have you lost a third of your rings or something like that. It would have been a lot more fair than losing all of it because it can be pretty upsetting losing hundreds of rings. Now for the mechanics that are exclusive to transform. Transforming vehicles from cars to boats to planes. This game has three different drive styles you need to learn, but it's not as hard as it seems. Cars and boats behave pretty much the same, while planes you're in flying controls, which means up is down and down is up. Others you, you can always change it in the option menu. Each vehicle has its own quirks to them, while the cars really don't have anything special about them, it's good for learning the game. Boats can perform tricks while put while the waves put them in the air. Last but not least, planes are the fastest out of the trio, and it allows for risk boosts. Risk boosts are performed whenever a plane could hit something, and you do a trick to dodge it. Normal tricks in plane mode doesn't give you any boosts, but risk boost allows you to get some extra speed for the daring few. While performing boost, any boost, before getting hit, you can dodge an item. So skilled players can dodge items as long as the track layout allows it. Transform boosts are the last thing to talk about, and while your vehicle is transforming, as long as it's not into a plane, if you do a trick in the air and land, you'll get a boost. It's nothing really special, it's just a no and it's nothing really special, it's just a trick boost. They just call it transform boost to make it sound special, and I guess kinda epic or something like that. The mechanics in both of these games are solid and are pretty fun. The main reason I don't care for Team Racing is because of the tracks and the fact that it's not transformed. You added the mechanics from Team Racing into Transform, it'll play really well, if not better. And that's my point. I really wish they would have made a Transform 2 and have added all these mechanics to the cars. With these solid mechanics, both of these games make for a pretty balanced game. Yeah, this game is the most balanced game out of a bunch. By this game, I mean both, but a little bit more on the Transform side. The only reason I'm going with Transformed over Team Racing is because the recovery time when getting hit and also the rings. All the items work, mechanics are solid, and it all blends into a pretty well-balanced game. At least when it comes to kart racing games, that is. We're almost there. One game left.
I'm going to try not to repeat what I said for the last three games, but that might not happen. This game looks amazing. Out of all of the games, I say this has the best visuals. All of the colors just pop and blend in so nicely. While this game has the most racetracks in a set region, most of the tracks don't look like they could be right next to each other. The variety of choices, not only in characters, but character outfits and skins is simply staggering not to mention the vehicle customization. I'm not even gonna count how many there are, just so you know there's at least 100 for each section, if you include the body and body decals as the same section. The best part is you can choose whatever you want due to it being only cosmetic. There's a downside to this, and it falls on Activision, because of course it does. While you do have plenty of choices in this game, Activision decided to put in a microtransaction storefront into this game post launch. I think it was a bit slimy due to the fact that it's a remake and microtransactions weren't in the original, but it could have been worse. I'm glad they seemed at least fair with the prices for the coins. I haven't bought any. The way you earn coins is based off of time spent on a racetrack primarily. So the longer you are in a race, the more coins you will receive at the end of the race. Personally, I would have liked it if the top three racers got an extra bonus to their coins for doing well to at least make you feel like doing better means anything. Sadly, everyone earns the same amount no matter how skilled you are in the game, which simply sucks. While I do like the visuals a lot, they do have their flaws with how you unlock them. And hey, if you don't care about the microtransaction storefront, you can disregard this. With a total of 55 characters, unless Beanox adds some more. Also, I'm not counting Fix Rillaru as a new character for obvious reasons. Let that sink in, 55 characters. That's a lot of characters. Along with the plethora of skins and outfits you have at your fingertips, you can dress your favorite Crash character in whatever you feel like it. This also includes Spyro and friends in the game too, so you can play as that purple lizard. Honestly, the choices of characters with little to no downsides is amazing. Since you can choose what engine you want to play with for the character now, all you have to do is get comfortable with one to two drive styles and then boom, you're done, you're a happy guy. Also, I like how they have two characters that you have to unlock in a strange way, that being King Chicken and The Crate. Weird and strange characters are just the icing on cake when it comes to kart racing games. I love how they added this into the game by the way of challenges. There are some characters you have to unlock completely in the adventure mode, which is solid, and then there's Penta Penguin, which you have to put a cheat code into to unlock. The others, I hope you like grinding for coins to unlock these characters and skins. This game has a total of 39 tracks. Sorry, PS4 players. Retro Stadium, I'm counting as a skin, with a total of 31 tracks being returning and only eight which are new. This makes CTR with the least number of new tracks available. Since this game was advertised as a remake for the original CTR, I'm fine with that. It doesn't feel like I got swindled when it comes to tracks like I felt with Team Racing. Also, this game reimagines some of the CNK tracks, CNK standing for Crash Nitro Kart, so they wouldn't be using any of the anti-gravity stack sections they had. You didn't think Mario Kart was the first game that had an anti-gravity, did you? One of the tracks that has been chained most notably is Hyper Spaceway. They took about a third of this track due to it being an anti-gravity, and they replaced the starting line, which I was a fan of the original placement. Then you have tracks like Angle's Castle, um, no, 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 that's not right, Cortex Castle. With so many 90 degree turns that it's almost maddening to keep up speed on this track. <laughs> While others like Electron Avenue let you get by with blazing fast speeds all track long. Just like with Deluxe, I don't dislike any of these tracks. Some are improvements compared to the original. I'm looking at you, Thunderstruck. The new tracks that they made post-launch are really fun to play on. They take advantage of all the game's advanced mechanics. There are a few tracks that are hard to learn, but with enough practice, they can become pushovers. CTR is tied with the least number of items, that being 11 with Transformed. But unlike Transformed, these items can be powered up. To power up items, you have to collect the Wampa Fruit. These fruit behave exactly like coins in Mario Kart, except for when you gather 10. Once you have 10, all your items become powered up. Most of the juiced items will either last longer, some will move quicker, or hit harder. 
I'm telling you this now because getting hit in this game hurts even more than any other game I've mentioned. This is because you lose all of your speed when getting hit. This is a big deal because you may not be able to get that speed until ways down the track. Meaning, you can just lose the race because you got hit. If there was an option to turn off items while playing only with friends, I would do it in a heartbeat. Not to mention, some of these items just don't work. This may be just a me problem though. I'm looking at you, missiles. I've been right behind a racer and the missile just simply goes straight without seeking them out. Sometimes it feels like they, I get hit randomly, which is frustrating because most likely I won't be able to catch up anymore. The blue shell-like item in this game is the warp orb, and it indiscriminately attacks other drivers until it gets to the lead racer. But powered up, it attacks everyone along the track. Honestly, this game is fun, but sometimes you wish you could just turn the items off just to see who's the fastest. Alright, go grab something to eat or something to drink because we're getting into CTR's mechanics. And oh boy, there's a lot. Let's first talk about the various levels of speed this game has to offer. The speeds are Drift Speed 1, Drift Speed 2, Sacred Fire, Blue Fire, and Blue Sacred Fire. Let me explain the drift speeds first with the way you drift. The way you drift in this game is a bit different than the other games. You have a gauge at the bottom right of your screen. While drifting, the gauge will start to fill up. Before it fully fills, you need to press the other drift button to get a boost. This is level 1 drift speed. If you combine this action two more times, you'll get a boost to your top speed. This is level 2 drift speed. Sacred Fire, Blue Fire, and Blue Sacred Fire are all given via a boost pad. Sacred Fire can also be given by a trick boost. Trick boost works roughly the same way as Mario Kart, but instead of getting a, the same boost for one trick, the boost is determined by how long you remain in the air. You will keep the speed for as long as you have reserves. What are reserves? Reserves are the figurative gas in your tank for your fire. The fire that's in the back of your, that's coming out of your exhaust. It's an invisible meter that you have little to no way of finding out how much is left. The better you are at the game, the more you can predict when you're going to run out. How do you build reserves? Simple. By constantly chaining drifts, tricks, and running over turbo pads, your fire will remain bright. This takes some time to build up a good stock of reserves, and the easiest way to lose them is by bumping into a wall. Did you know walls could eat your reserves? Okay, not really, but it feels like they're trying. Another way of losing your reserves is by simply pressing the brake button while holding the gas button. Why is losing your reserves a big deal? Well, a lot of the tracks in this game only have a few blue sacred fire pads. If you lose it, you will have to wait until you run over that pad again in order to get back to top speed. Usually most tracks only have one of these pads, so catching up will be a huge task to overcome. There are two more advanced techniques in this game, air braking and U-turning. I've reached out to another YouTuber called I the Dashy to see if I could use a clip in his video to explain the two braking styles. I recommend you watch this video in full if you're interested in the game's mechanics. He does excellent time trial videos for those insane dev chimes, as well as a link down in the description. All right, let's play I the Dashy's clip. U-turning is performed by letting off of the gas, pressing diagonally down in the direction you want to turn, and holding a brake. The cart will then turn in a tight arc without losing fire. This can be performed in the air or on the ground, and the latter is referred to as a ground U-turn. Air braking is performed basically the same way, but without the down direction, and instead just pushing left or right while braking. The cart will continue moving forward, but will basically rotate on its axis until you let go of the brake, where it will then slingshot into the direction you're facing. This can only be performed while in the air without losing fire. The moment you touch the ground, if you're still holding the brake, you will lose fire. Thank you, Oi the Dashy, for allowing me to use the clip. <laughs> you gotta love how reaching out is as simple as axing in the comment section, and it can still sound like something that's so epic. U-turning is the harder of the two to perform, but it's the better option of the two, mainly due to how much control it puts in the player's hands compared to air braking. The thing is, this game makes all these mechanics feel like they just work. It never feels like you're not supposed to be using these things. You're constantly drifting, tricking, U-turning, and other... In the other games, you will eventually have some downtime. But not in this game. It feels like you always can improve and do better with the mechanics in your hand. Not that you can't in the other games. It's just it feels like there's a lot more room in this one. CTR is a pretty balanced game when it comes to mechanics. 
alone, but if you mix in items into the equation, it becomes less balanced. There is an easy way to fix this without any major changes. Most items that don't target you are very quiet and you tend not to hear them when they get close. If the item sounds were a bit louder, you probably could hear them to dodge them. Also, private matches should allow items to be turned off for races. This is allowed for battle mode, but not for races. Other than that, this game is pretty fun to play. It's just getting hit with items is the worst thing in the world. All right, upon listening to this audio, right now we're at past the 40 minute mark. We only got a few more sections to get through and this video will be done. Didn't mean for it to be this long and I'm glad that you were, are listening to me now. Thank you. Now here goes a few miscellaneous sections I couldn't put into a category for various reasons. First off, music. All the soundtracks are great. Every last one of them. Team Racing, Transformed, CTR, and Mario Kart. They're all good, they fake their courses. And a little bonus note for CTR is you can switch between retro and remix tracks. So if you like the old school tracks, you can go back and listen to them. I usually listen to Hyperspace Way whenever I'm playing on that track. Next things up, online. Both leaderboards and just playing online for both CTR and Mario Kart suck. So for CTR, Lobby's worse. I've never experienced a kart game that's worse online than CTR. Mario Kart's a bit better because you tend to stay in the lobby, but peer-to-peer -peer on both of these games suck, like flat out. You feel like you get hit randomly when you clearly dodge something that you thought you dodged. So the last thing I'm adding to this miscellaneous section is availability. The only way you can get transformed on current gen consoles right now is by playing it on Xbox One via its backwards compatibility. Transformed is available on a lot of platforms. Last gen consoles, Wii U, PC, Xbox One. It's on all those platforms. Hey, a little question that kind of sprung in my mind while I was writing up this. What generation is the Wii U in? Is it in 7? 8? 7.5? Not like it really matters, I just was kind of curious because Nintendo kind of skipped is in like a limbo between the generation. Are we counting the Wii U as 8th generation or are we call counting it as ninth generation? Or are we calling this Wii U as 7th generation or 7.5 or 8? Like that's always kind of confused me. If anybody got an answer, drop down in the comment section. Now per console, I'm going to tell you what game I recommend per console. If you have an Xbox One, get transformed. It's the best deal, it's only about 20 bones you can spend, and it's a really solid racing game. If you have a Nintendo Switch, get Mario Kart 8 or CTR. Those are your two games that you can get. If you like balanced games, go for CTR. If you like chaotic games, go for Mario Kart. If you want a hard racing game, Go for CTR. If you want to kick back in a relaxed, fun time game when you're hard out at work or school, go for Mario Kart. Now for PlayStation 4, CTR. Even though Team Racing's on there, it's probably one of the better versions of it. Just go for CTR. You'll thank me later. If you have multiple consoles, if you have an Xbox One or a uh, PC, if you have a PC and a Switch, get Mario Kart and get transformed. If you have a PC and you have a PlayStation, get CTR, get transformed. You see, I'm kind of recommending transformed a lot. It's a really good game. Not only is it cheap, but it's really fun. Now it's time for the moment we all been waiting for. The rankings of Yoshkin. We're gonna be ranking these games from best to worst. Wait, I said that wrong. We're gonna be ranking these games from worst to the best. Now this is gonna be a tough, hard fought competition. We don't know what's gonna be fourth and we don't know what's gonna be first, but we're gonna try and see if we can sort through it. Well, that was a lie. We already know what's fourth. It's Team Racing. And it's not like I really want to pick on this game. It's because it's an average game going against amazing games. It puts the standard for being the worst at average. So it's not that I don't recommend Team Racing, it's that I don't recommend Team Racing. <laughs> nah, to be serious, it's a fun game. It has a good soundtrack and the mechanics are really good, but if you have the option, just go for the others. Now, number three. 
CTR. You might be wondering, I had a lot of praise for this game. One of the reasons why it's number three and not number two is mainly because of the microtransactions. I just don't like it. They shouldn't be in the game. The game's fun and all, but they shouldn't be there. Second reason why it's there is because of the time-based mechanic for how fast you can earn your coins. Even though it's only cosmetic, it still irks me very much that CTR has a time-based mechanic in it. I do not like earning things based off of time alone. I like earning things based off of how well I perform. CTR doesn't do that with its coins. Again, I've said earlier in the video, if they had it where the top three got bonus coins for being in the top three places, that'd be much better. But with that, nah. CTR is fine. And if you really like CTR and don't care about the microtransaction, you can switch two and three around. Now for number two, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, you can say this is biased, because it probably is, but Mario Kart has always been my bread and butter. I've loved Mario Kart since I was a kid. I've Actually, it's one of my first games I've ever played, and I've always loved the chaos in it. I feel that if all these games were released within a three-year span of each other, I'd still be playing Mario Kart probably over CTR. It's not that CTR is bad. Hey, it made number three out of four, so it has to be doing something right, and it was a close spot between this and CTR. But Mario Kart has more courses, the track designs are excellent, and not saying that CTRs isn't. And the items all work, maybe a little bit too well. But that's the fun in Mario Kart. It's chaos incarnate. You have to like it or you don't. That's how Mario Kart is. And now for number one, Transformed. Now, there's a lot of things I can say about Transformed. It's done a lot of things I've been hoping for a racing game since I was a little kid. One of the first games I've played, other than Mario Kart, was Diddy Kong Racing. One of the things that I loved about Diddy Kong Racing was the fact that you had three different ways of playing the game. You could play by car, boat, or plane. In this game, it does it all, with a bit of a twist. You can't actively choose if you're in a car, boat, or plane, but the game actually tells you when you go into it. So it balances all of these, so planes can't just dominate in every course available for them, and it makes the tracks dynamic. Yes, Mario Kart's had this along with uh, Crash Nitro Kart. Mario Kart had it with Grumble Volcano originally, and Crash Nitro Kart had it with his activation crates, but this game is completely centered around this main gimmick, and it works so well. I really had wished that the kart racing game genre took a lot more notes from this game and made transforming tracks, not even transforming vehicles, but transforming tracks where certain tracks were just different around when you drive them every time. It'd be amazing. Even if it was only visual, it'd still be cool. Most games don't do that. I don't really see very many of the games do this very often. This is a game I've been wanting since I was literally a child. That's what makes it one of my favorite games of all time. It's that and it delivers. It has a good cast of characters, the mechanics are solid, along with all the other games, but it's just everything blends so well in this game. That's why I love Transform. That's why it's my number one game. It's so good. It's too good. And that's kind of why I put it on this list because Team Racing disappointed me. I really was looking for Transform 2. I might say, okay, they took out the transforming elements. Now my expectations were like sky high for when it was, and I was lower to the ground. And I was like, yeah, this game's now average. I'm talking about team racing, not transformed. I'm gonna say this game's just average, and I was really looking forward to them doing something. They got the mechanics and everything that I liked in it, but it just didn't have the transforming aspect or the tracks design. That was the main thing that hit me with team racing. I really wanted it to be a Transform 2. And it wasn't. It didn't even really come close. It's just an average racing game. So if you're wondering why I kind of sideswiped you with Transformed in this video, that's why. I had to put this game in this video or Sonic would have just plain the lost to Mario Kart and Crash. But in this case, it kind of went too much because Sonic ended up dominating due to the fact of it was a really good game. 
So, the best mascot racing kart game of the last decade happened to be Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed. Hey, I could be wrong. If you think there's a different game out there that beats this game, drop down in the comments and tell me how you feel about it. I could be wrong. Maybe there was some other mascot game I've never played. I know Garfield was down there, but I didn't touch that game. I thought, eh, the controls didn't look too good for that game. First off, thank you, I, the Dashy, for allowing me to use your clip. And two, thank you to 7.62 Nato for joining me for the Mario Kart footage. Well, I thank you for watching this video. It's an extra long video for my first recorded video coming back. If you like, could you share it? That's about it. That's all I would ask. Um, but. This is Jorkin, the Yoshkin. I'll see you guys on the track. And if you have any questions, I'm currently streaming because I'm, I got nothing else better to do. So if you find that something confused you in this video, pop up in the streams or go down in the comments and I'll answer your questions. All right, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.